<laughs> Guys, it's been a minute, a few weeks. I took some time off. As you know, I am working on so many things, but we executed a very powerful Africa Investors Academy virtual summit. Get the links to the replays below. You will not be disappointed. Over 15 hours of actionable information creators, entrepreneurs, investors from all over Africa sharing their insider tips on how they're making money, how they're thriving, how their families are better, how their marriages are better, how they're seeing higher return on their um, investments, how they're making their income work for them, how they're retired and thriving in retirement, uh, all the things, how they're taking tri trips all over the continent, if you have any desire to learn anything, you want to get access to those replays. The link will be in the description below. Um, but I needed a break, y'all. I needed a break, but I'm going to tell you about why this is the time to maybe get out of South Africa. Um, I'll tell you more on that. <laughs> I'll tell you more on that next. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Ashley on my channel, Ashley in Africa. I talk about my experience of living, doing business here on the continent of Africa. I currently live in South Africa. It's almost four years, going on four years of living here on the continent, a little overestimation because it will be four years in October. Um, but it's beautiful. I love it. It's I'm thriving. The skin is glowing, honey. The energy is, it's a, it's a vibe. It's beautiful outside right now. We had a bit of a cold storm, like a, a cold front last week. Um, but, but yeah, I digress. So that's what I share here on this channel and the community is growing. We hit 50,000 subscribers while I was on break. I'm so grateful to every single one of you that subscribe to this channel. If you're not subscribed, I think it's about 30%, 40% that watch and are not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. It's free. If you're getting value out of the content, just simply subscribe. It shows me that you value the content and it shows me that I need to put out more content, which I will continue to do, especially for the 50,000 of you that are already here. I am so grateful for you. Um, it's been a journey, eh? Yo, it's been a journey. It's been a journey. Um, and so, yeah, we did a lot of things. All of the recap videos are in the links. You can see what happened at the summit. If you get the, you know, if you get the replays, you'll find tons of value. And we were in KZN for uh, Places of Remembrance tour, which is super powerful. And then I was in KZN for a wedding. All of those videos are up or will be up. Stay tuned, subscribe to the channel if you want access to it so you could see me living my best life in South Africa. And while I am living my best life, it may not be the best time for you to visit South Africa. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why, okay? So load shedding. Well, load shedding hasn't been so bad lately, at least from my experience. Um, and I think a couple, you know, politicians are in the media saying, huh, the ANC, they are strategic. And, you know, why isn't load shedding being a problem? I'd say, you know, load shedding, they are scheduled power outages that happen. Um, and Honestly, it seems that depending on the area where you live in this country depends upon your challenges with uh, load shedding as well as water challenges. And so one of the biggest challenges I think with living in South Africa is infrastructure. This country is one of the most, if not the most developed countries here on the continent, but a lot of the infrastructure was created for the minority. And when the majority took power, then the infrastructure became available for all. But the maintenance of that infrastructure has seemed to be a challenge over the years. And I won't say it's talent, right? I will say it's just, you know, somewhat of a disconnect of who should maintain what and where it should go. Um, yes, you know, people will comment in the comments about, um, uh, Corruption, and you see that is a word that I'm always troubled with because the reality is 
corruption here on the continent looks different than corruption in the West because it's corruption everywhere. The creators of corruption, um, you know, we're not Africans, but corruption happening for your own pocket versus for the pockets of others externally um, is also a big issue here in this country. And so infrastructure, depending on where you live, depending on what you're able to privatize um, depends on the challenges that you experience. And so um, if you are traveling in the country and you're moving about maybe as a solo traveler or a budget traveler, you're going to have some challenges uh, with, in, you know, with infrastructure related to load shedding and water challenges. Um, and I don't necessarily disagree that privatization of these is a bad thing. Living in the U.S. and seeing the same infrastructure breakdowns when you rely upon government for everything you need, you're bound to um, face some challenges. And so in my building, the private board has invested in solar. Um, we personally invested in inverters and you know water as a backup system in a community that is invested in that makes it so that you don't have those challenges but if you're budget traveling solo traveling looking for more budget friendly experience south africa might not be the best place for you currently um and we're about to get it's about to get cold i don't know if you guys remember watching videos last year i was struggling through the winter and i think last year was one of the coldest winters on record it snowed. I wasn't here for it. I had a big, big, big attitude with South Africa last year because I was not expecting snow, not expecting cold. Again, coming from a very ignorant perspective where we think it's hot everywhere in Africa. It's just not true. Um, so we're going into winter season and a lot of the buildings are not built with heating on the inside of the building. So you have your portable gas heaters, your electric heaters, your hot water bottles, your gowns, your socks, whatever you have, because um, it's getting cold. Now, again, if you're a budget traveler, solo traveler looking to save money, you're going to run into some of those issues where it's going to be cold on the inside of your house and there won't be a whole lot for you to do, especially if you're coming thinking that it's cold, it's hot all year round in Africa. It's just not the case. Um, but winter is coming. For those, again, if you're living in a more um, upmarket area or at a hotel, they have ways to help you kind of balance some of those issues. But as far as cold, it's nothing like Chicago cold, New York cold, maybe like a Miami cold where it's cold for a few weeks or Florida cold with cold for a few weeks, but in the daytime, it's still sunny. It's still beautiful outside. Um, but if you don't like cold at all, it might not be a good time for you to come to South Africa. It's also political season. Um, and, you know, the state of politics here in South Africa is very dynamic. It's layered. If you are a political enthusiast or someone that is geopolitically inclined to understand what's happening, especially when we're looking at the power of the economic, the global uh, geopolitical position of South Africa within BRICS, it's quite exciting for me. You know, some people, they kind of think, oh, you know, political parties can get violent. And I haven't seen that personally, um, but. I've always been told by my like African friends during elections to stay at home and you know don't go out in the streets and it's always very interesting to me because I'm thinking like do you know what it looks like politically in the country where I'm from like it's chaos it is chaos and people still go out and about and do what they do but they like enjoy the chaos and the violence and I will say that you know, debates are a real thing here in South Africa and you will hear eloquent debating happening. And at the end of the day, people are happy. They join um, community and they have a good time. So if you don't understand that level of banter and that kind of complexity with understanding multi-party governments, you might feel a little out of place. You might feel weary. Um, if you are going to listen to these alerts from, you know, uh, what is it? The, 
the travel advisory that U.S. kind of puts out there and let that ingrain a level of fear in you because of the political environment, South Africa might not be the best place for you. But if you have a level of enthusiasm and interest on how politics is ship, sh sh it's shifting and shaping um, in what is such a beautiful time to be alive, um, I think you'll, you'll really enjoy it. And so um, if you wanna visit South Africa anytime soon, I welcome you and I'm sure um, the country and the people of South Africa welcome you as well if you have an open heart and you are willing to experience our culture 100%. Um, I've got some fantastic, fun, and very economically friendly travel guides that you can access in the description for countries uh, like Kenya, Tanzania, South Africa, and cities like Johannesburg, Cape Town, and Durban. And if you're looking for more of an expat experience, you can access the travel guides with the expat bonus as well. So those links will be in the description. They're super affordable. Um, they come with all of my personal recommendations on where to stay, where to dine, where to shop, where to spa, cultural experiences, as well as links to you know some of my recommendations on physicians, schools, and so much more. So get access to those travel guides in the link below. And if you liked this video, be sure to like it, share it with someone who finds value in it, and subscribe to the channel. It's free. Until the next video, I'll see you soon.